James Kittle was passionate about sports. Playing basketball, wrestling. That all changed when the brain tumor was discovered. I was going home every day due to headaches. I'm Newsline 9's Brian Groff. See how a serious illness turned into a powerful passion for music. If it wasn't for that, I never would have gotten into music. Tomorrow night at 6 on Newsline 9. Something I feel like I can do forever. Newsline 9 at 6. Tonight we bring you an amazing story that felt anything but amazing a few years ago. A young man named James Kittle was a focused athlete. Then a life-changing brain tumor helps him discover a brand new talent. Sports is a huge part of the Kittle household. James loved to play basketball and football and of course wrestle. He led a healthy lifestyle and competed with a lot of energy. And he was determined to make state wrestling as a fifth grader in 2004. You know, I had the perfect bracket, really. They're all people I've beaten before. That is, until his world was turned upside down. I was going home every day due to headaches, pain, just bad pain. Then we got to the family doctor, and that's when he sat down, and he, his eyes were swelling up or welling up with water, and we just knew that something wasn't right, and then he gave us the news. James had a brain tumor. I, I couldn't even tell you. There's was, it was just so many things that go through my, went through my mind. You know, what, what's going to happen if am I going to make it after? Surgery immediately followed. James faced a serious situation. And you can't do anything to help them. You have to wait until the doctor does his job. Although the suspicion was that it was a benign tumor, that was not a certainty uh, before uh, surgical exploration. He had surgery two days after the diagnosis. The tumor was benign and successfully removed. Came home after that, was, things were going good. But he wasn't in the clear just yet. Soon after, complications set in. My patch had dissolved where the, that they had in the hole in. He ran a fever and his head was beginning to swell with a brain fluid leak. Oh, my, my head was just huge. He was developing increased pressure in the brain which was a significant uh, concern for me. He ended up back in the hospital, and that's where he spent his 11th birthday. I tried to stay confident. Four days later, he underwent a painful procedure to drain the fluid and fight off that infection. His hands were bruised and sore from all the IVs. I remember being worried about getting funny looks because of all the bandaging, the little turban thing I had to wear. He was very strong. He was always very strong. And he'd say, well, you're not crying over there, Mom, are you? <laughs> no, I'm fine. He was as strong as he could. I never saw him cry once. But annual exams now show he's clear of the tumor. And with each turn of the calendar, the kiddos feel more confident James is completely healthy. So we always had to schedule the year out. So when we left the hospital, we knew a year from now, this, this appointment was, was to be made. The week, two weeks prior, we're just on eggshells. We were just always nervous. And then after the fourth year, it, Dr. Weissman's like, hey, this is cool. We don't have to worry about this anymore. James' parents kept a journal throughout his whole experience, and they turned it into this book called Tumor, The Day Our World Stopped Turning. And as we turn to the final page, we see a post-it note, and his dad writes, to be continued. <laughs> And that's where James discovers a whole new talent. As for all that time he used to spend with sports, where would he focus it? All the energy. That comes with the sound of music. You know, once all the emotions were down, I realized, you know, I can't play any of that anymore. That's, you know, my whole life pretty much is over in that area. So I had to find somewhere else to go with all my talent. Just the feel of it, especially jazz, I just can't get enough of that. It just feels like a passion, you know, it's just something I feel like I can do forever. He's just very musically talented. Much, uh, one of the best musicians we have at West High School right now is, is James Kittle. You can see right there the wink he gives at the end of the performance, great stuff. James had very little experience with music, after all sports took up all of his time but he steers toward music in part because of a joke he makes with his doctor. Tomorrow night at 6, find out how James discovers his musical side. Melissa. Newsline 9 at 6. 
At the age of 10, James Kittle of Rib Mountain went from a completely healthy kid to brain surgery patient. He had a benign tumor that was removed and he overcame very serious complications that followed. Back to health and in the final part of our series, Kittle finds a void in his life. Throughout the headaches, the brain surgery, the swelling, the infections, the shunts in his head, the staples in his back, and the IVs that bruised his body. And learning how to walk again, not once, but twice, James Kittle always kept a sense of humor. The doctor had gone up to make some preparations or whatever he was doing, and, you know, well, let's put a little humor into this. He comes back here and said, you know, well, will I be able to play the piano after this? And he goes, well, can you play now? I said, well, no, but I was hoping to. <laughs> and that's where his life takes a turn. He always loved sports, but because of the soft spot on the back of his head, he could no longer compete in contact sports. A blow would be fatal. But what started out as a joke soon turned into his next passion. I recommended perhaps uh, he consider engaging in music uh, and the study of music. Started as one dream, got his brain tumor, a different dream came. James had some experience playing a recorder, so he tried the clarinet. Well, that lasted until he discovered jazz. And after a year, I kind of started listening to more like jazz music, and I realized the clarinet really wasn't really my thing. And I taught myself saxophone that summer, and that's just taken off. He thrives at it, and he moved to first chair in both alto sax concert and tenor sax jazz. Without James, it's very noticeable in the band when he's there and when he's not there, because the sound, the sound he provides is just, it's impeccable. James and the Wausau West Jazz Band play once a month at the Red Eye Brewing Company in Wausau. It's performances like this where he gets the thrill that he used to have from sports. It's a huge roster when it's all over, you know, I've never been happier. In the October concert, he had a solo where he walked to the front of the stage and he played. And when he was done, he gave the crowd a wave and everybody went, whoa, you know, crazy. And I think it's that same uh, adrenaline rush and that, per that performance part that he can get at the concert, right. after the concert, that feels good. Amazingly, James has done this with otosclerosis, which made him mostly deaf in his left ear. A recent surgery has slowly restored his hearing. His growth from a technical side has been massive, and from an emotional side, really letting himself play through the horn has been quite the amazing journey. Scars cover James' body, some hidden by that full head of hair, and the reminders of what he's gone through but never a reason for him to ask, why me? As his parents' journal said, it was the day the world stopped turning. But it's picked up speed again, and it rolls with the rhythm of music. I've often thought about it, the tumor almost being a gift in that sense, because it, if it wasn't for that, I never would have gotten into music, and I would have continued with sports, and you know, I'm really glad I got into the music. I just I enjoy that way more than I ever enjoyed playing sports. Like James said, it's, it's not poor pitiful us. It's no. it's an it's opportunity. opportunity. It's something different that we would never have seen him try if it wasn't for this this tumor. As a neurosurgeon, to treat a, a young patient like that and see them thrive uh, in their life and make great choices and have the success uh, such as James, it's it's very satisfying. Satisfying and inspiring, James is now at a point in his life where he can share his story with kids who perhaps are going through some of the same experiences as he did, and you can tell he's having a great time playing that saxophone and playing with the Wausau West Jazz Band. Melissa?